Okay, so today we're going to look at primary storage, which you may sometimes hear as primary memory or even main memory. There's some terms on the board. Some of them are to do with our lesson today. I want you to have a little look over them, see if you can memorize them. Feel free to pause the video. As we move to the next slide, you'll see that there's one that's been added and one that's been taken away. Okay, we'll move to the next slide. Did you spot which ones have been added and which ones have been taken away? You can rewind the video and go backwards and forwards uh, to check your answers. So specification content, we're looking to understand the need for primary storage, the differences between RAM and ROM, the purpose of RAM and the purpose of ROM, along with what virtual memory is and how it's used. I'll pause on the requirements so you can have a quick read over those. So primary storage then. So there's two types of primary storage. You've got RAM and ROM. We'll talk about RAM, what RAM is, and then we'll talk about ROM. But ultimately, primary storage is storage that can be accessed, accessed directly by the CPU. Random access memory is uh, kind of like your working memory. It's the thing, the part of the computer, the storage for all of the currently running applications, anything that you're currently doing on your computer is stored in RAM. RAM is volatile. And what this means is that it needs power to store its data. So if, for example, you have a power cut whilst you're in the middle of doing something, quite often you'll find that the files or whatever it is you're working on gets lost. And you may have experienced this before, be it with a video game or something like that, where if it just gets switched off, your file hasn't been saved. In modern days, computers have got a bit smarter and make sort of regular sort of saves. So you can kind of get back to your file, but typically anything you're actively working on will get lost. But as I say, RAM is in essence where all of your currently running applications and files are being stored um, and get written to and read from by the CPU. Whereas read-only memory ROM, uh, this is where you have a small chip that is used to start up your, most, your computer most commonly. So this is non-volatile. This means that the data that's stored on the ROM chip is saved even when the computer is powered down. Now the ROM will store the BIOS, the basic input output system. This is where when you turn your computer on, if you've ever seen that you get this black and white screen with some basic text written on it, um, this is your computer firing up. And the job of the BIOS system is to perform the post test, power on self test. So it will check to make sure all the components are working. It will also then um, start to load up things from your secondary storage device. So from your hard disk drive, such as your operating systems, as well as the sort of basic programs that you're gonna need in order to start to do things on your computer. So what happens is the ROM will tell the CPU to go into your secondary storage, load up the operating system by copying it into RAM, and then the RAM working with the CPU will start performing instructions. This can often be referred to as the bootstrap or the boot up program. I'll pause on this table so you have a chance to look over the definitions, what the uh, acronyms RAM, RAM and ROM stand for, their uses and their volatility. So with computers, if we do get to a situation where we run out of RAM, there's some considerations that we need to make. So in essence, every time we open up an application or a file or something on our computer, that data gets moved over into our RAM. And most modern day computers have somewhere in the region of eight gigabytes, maybe more um, of RAM. And this can get filled up if you've got multiple applications open. So if you consider that your operating system is gonna take up some storage, if you're opening up things like Microsoft Word, Photoshop, and a game at the same time, when you start to open up all of these applications, you'll find that eventually you'll run out of storage space to have all these things in this active memory. So if we were sort of do the maths to keep things simple and said the operating system took up four gigabytes of data, Microsoft Word took up two gigabytes of data, if we had Google Chrome as well at two gigabytes, we're already at our eight gigabytes of RAM. Say we wanted to open up Photoshop as well. If we were to open up Photoshop in that scenario and said, say that it took up four gigabytes of RAM as well, we'd then need 12 gigabytes of RAM, but we haven't got enough. Rather than the computer saying, sorry, we're not gonna open it up, it's not gonna work. It starts to use something called virtual memory. Now what virtual memory is, is where space is borrowed from the long-term permanent storage to act as our RAM whilst we're using our computer. Now, that is uh, poses issues because virtual memory um, isn't particularly quick. So when we're using secondary storage in place of RAM, it slows our computer down. So RAM is super, super fast, uh, way, way faster than our secondary storage devices, our hard disk drive. So when we start using virtual memory, as we said, we see a significant drop in performance. So virtual memory works by when RAM is full, the data that's not currently in use. So if, for example, in that scenario where we said the operating system, Microsoft Word, Chrome, and Photoshop, 
if we weren't using Microsoft Word at the time, but we still had it open, the computer would be smart enough to work out that we're not using Microsoft Word, move all of the data from Microsoft Word onto our virtual memory in our secondary storage device, knowing that we're not likely to need to access that straight away. Probably move Chrome across as well to make space for us to be able to move Photoshop into our RAM, into our sort of currently active um, memory so that we can then start to use that. As and when we want to then go back to using something like Microsoft Word or Chrome that we our virtual memory, they get swapped back into our RAM and as things get swapped out. So this is continual cycle of moving data from RAM to our secondary storage on our hard disk drive as and when we want to use those files.